Hello lovelies, welcome to our channel Universal Movies. Today, I back quote M. Gunna explain a 2016 American action and science fiction film called Max Steel. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with Max and his mother, Molly, unpacking their stuff after moving to their old house. They lived there with Max's father, Jim, before he died. After that, they have moved around many times and Max is convinced they would never settle down in one place ever. Max notices pictures of star constellations and galaxies on the wall that his father created. After that, he begins to feel strange as electric devices around him suddenly crackle and his hand movements can interfere with pictures shown on TV. The next morning, he stops by in front of a closed, abandoned facility of NTech, then heads for school. Along the way, a girl hits him, causing him to fall off. She checks on him and asks him to meet her later after school to check in on his bike. At school, his teacher immediately recognizes him as the son of Jim McGrath, seemingly a renowned scientist in the community. Sophia, the girl who hit him earlier, repairs his bike, then he drives home to find his mother receiving a guest, Miles, an old co-worker of his dad. Turns out that Miles was the one who convinced his mother to move back to their old town. While Max, Molly, and Miles are having dinner, Miles tells them that he was there at the night of the accident that took Jim's life and that he has rebuilt NTech without Jim ever since. Max still feels uneasy due to the fact that he barely knows his father more than any other people, especially since he does not know what happened to him. Meanwhile, two scientists are playing ping-pong in a facility when they are surprised by a glowing entity waking up from the containment. The water molecules seem to defy gravity and form weird shapes, so they report a breach, and a group of soldiers is tasked to deal with the awakened subject. They seem to fight off a mysterious little creature before a blackout happens, which also affects the neighborhood as far as Max's house. After checking the electrical system, Max overhears Molly telling Miles that she is hesitant to tell the whole story to his son. After the dinner, Miles gives Max his business card and offers him to come by NTech anytime so he can show him around. Max goes to his room and looks up Miles' name on the internet to find any relation to the fatal explosion at NTech that killed his father. Many people believed it was a tornado, but unanswered questions still linger. Suddenly, the computer shuts off and Max produces a wave of glowing liquid energy from his hands which interrupts the electricity. He panics and tries to hide his hand, but he only causes more disruption to nearby electrical devices. The next day, he experiments with his new powers with old appliances, resulting in all of them being burnt because he overloads them. At school, Sophia invites him to a renowned Thai restaurant tomorrow. The excitement causes Max to disrupt the vending machine behind him to spit out its drinks which other students happily grab. Max goes home and explores more with his powers, but cannot find any clue relating to his condition on the internet. In the evening, he confronts his mom who is chilling on the back porch, asking why she has not told him anything about his father. Molly only replies that the story about his father is complicated and she does not think Max is ready to hear it. The next day, Max goes to meet Sophia, but his powers are uncontrollable, causing phones near him to die, including Sophia's. He suddenly feels dizzy, goes to the bathroom and discovers that his energy projections only become more powerful. He frantically runs away from the place without any explanation, leaving Sophia puzzled. Unable to control his immense powers, he almost passes out in the woods on the way home. The next morning, Max wakes up to find scars on his chest as well as a burnt shirt and blanket. He goes to the bathroom, finding a strange little creature floating beside him, which he almost hits before it explains itself. It introduces itself as Axtel, or Steel, an alien creature that feeds off Max's energy to survive. That energy is called Tachyon energy and Steel really needs it to stay alive. However, Steel cannot explain much about his origins or how Max got his powers. Still very much puzzled by the situation, Max drives Steel to the woods where he thought he found Steel and plans to leave him there so he can find his own way. However, several black SUVs stop by and the men inside, armed with guns, are shooting at them. Barely escaping, Max gets a glimpse of a memory, seemingly Steel's, where he hears a voice saying Ultralinks. Steel is terrified of the name and warns him that Ultralinks are dangerous. 
At school, Max is trying hard to keep steel hidden because it talks and moves a lot. He decides to go to the abandoned N-Tech facility after Steel sees his drawing of it and remembers its Ultralynx attackers. There, Steel explains that the tachyon energy Max possesses can become turbo energy, further enhancing his physical abilities. Max is able to punch a wall, do parkours, and run faster. He is having a good time training his powers when he almost falls off but Steel quickly aids him by encasing him with armor. That armor enables him to harmonize with Max and allows Max to fly or go into battle position. However, Max is reluctant to harmonize with Steel as he is unsure of what effects it will impose on him. Eventually, Max catches another glimpse of memory, this time he sees Jim with Steel. He realizes Steel knows his father, but Steel is still unsure of the details. However, it recognizes that the tornado that happened the night Jim died was caused by Ultralinks. They are so powerful that they can manipulate matters, including air, to cause giant storms. Max goes to see Miles, hoping he can tell him the truth about his father. Along the way, he realizes the men who were shooting him earlier are following him, so he drives in circles to confuse them. Luckily, he bumps into Sophia and politely asks her to drive him to N-Tech while he instructs Steel to separate from him and lure the men away. Miles receives them warmly. Unfortunately, Miles is also hesitant to tell Max about his father, then Max gets a headache again when Miles is showing him his father's dream, a power core to control powers stronger than what man-made have created. He hurriedly runs home again, leaving Miles and Sophia puzzled. Along the way, he realizes a storm is forming, probably an Ultralink coming after him. He attempts to hide but to no avail as the storm is too powerful. Luckily, Steel finds him, and they harmonize for a brief moment to counterattack the Ultralink. Max catches another memory, this time he knows his father had the same powers like him and that Steel is actually an Ultralink. He disconnects himself from Steel, devastated by the reality that Steel only uses his energy to survive, and sends it away. Arriving home, Max is cornered by the men with guns. He thinks her mother is kidnapped by the men then runs to Sophia's house to borrow her phone and truck, and calls Miles. Miles tells him that his mother is brought to the old N-Tech facility, so he heads there. Meanwhile, Sophia calls Molly, who is safe at home, surrounded by those men, asking about Max. Molly does not know where Max is either, but she tells her that everything is alright and she will call her back. After hanging up the phone, Molly exclaims to the men that they should take orders from her instead of from Miles, as she is still the majority shareholder of Entech. She also learns of Miles' plan to kill Steel, thus she instructs them to find Max. Max arrives at the old Entech facility and discovers the old power core his father used. He gets another flashback where he sees his dad teaming up with Steel to turn on the power core to fend off the evil Ultralinks. Miles was also there at the lab, however, it turns out Miles is the bad guy all along, making a deal with the Ultralinks to kill Jim and Steel because they are rebels. Jim, still strapped to the power core, planned to overload the core so it would explode and Miles would not benefit from it and also to save Steel. Jim was actually an alien entity too, which explained why he got the Tachyon energy. Jim and Steel rebel to protect the Earth from destruction. Max now realizes that Steel was telling him the truth, but Miles already appears behind him, suited up, ready to fight him and take his tachyon energy. He orders Max to step into the power core so he can harvest his energy, and Max does so, but Steel comes to his aid and harmonizes with him. Wearing white armor, Max is able to fight Miles, although he is careful to avoid the energy harvester on one of Miles' hands as it will weaken him. Molly's men arrive to help, but they are much less powerful than Miles so he easily defeats them. Thinking of any strategy to get out of the situation, Max and Steel finally agree to actually give Miles the energy he wants, but when Miles links with him, he switches to turbo energy mode and overloads Miles' suit. As a result, an explosion happens, which kills Miles. Fortunately, Max and Steel survive it. Molly arrives to embrace Max and greet Steel, telling it that if she knew Steel was still alive, she would not have abandoned him all those years ago. They go home where Max can rest and finally remembers more good memories about his father. The next day, Max pays a visit to Sophia to return her truck and thanks her for helping him. 
Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.